We're working on your low point. I'm helping you with your short game and you're gonna be triggered. It's a new breed of golf. Let's do this. It's time for Proving It, presented by Titleist. So fun to be able to understand how to improve your game. Now, I gotta tell you, one of the biggest problems that you run into is you've hit this perfect drive, and it happened to me this past weekend. Hit a great tee shot, and I find my ball in a divot. I know. And you sit there and your reaction is, how could this possibly happen? I hit a perfect tee shot. This is unfair. It's unfair. It's not fair. It's golf. You have to be able to get better at it. But it's hard to practice. You don't practice it. Many of you were hitting off of mats. Some of you were actually hitting off of turf. But you want to give yourself a good lie because that's what you do. You never put it in it. Put it in a divot. Learn how to hit out of it. Now, for those of you that want to really improve, here's what you do. You get yourself one of these mats. This right here is just a wine, it's a, it's a wine drying kind of mat. I got one of these a number of years ago. It's incredibly effective, easy to slip into the bag, and if you hit it, it doesn't hurt. What you do is you put this down right about there, and you're gonna have that golf ball just a couple of inches in front of that mat. Now, in order for you to be successful hitting out of a divot, obviously we need to hit the ball first. That's one of the, the keys to this. But what's really the key to hitting the ball first is getting the low point of the swing to get forward. And I can promise you as you start to understand how to get the low point forward, you're gonna start making much better contact. And it won't just be a divot, you're gonna, you're gonna strike it so much better all the time because you're getting that ball first contact. How do we now hit out of this divot. Well, I've put this back there. I'm going to talk to you about a couple of things that I want you to understand. The first is we have to steepen our angle of approach. I know a lot of, of you have heard that. You got to steep. How do you do that? Well, a couple little different things. One, I want you to nudge the ball position in the back of your stance and I want you to set some weight a little bit forward. But one of the keys to this thing is getting closer. So what I want you to feel is, is that when you go in here, I want you to feel like you're nudging up and almost getting the heel of the golf club off the ground. What that will do is force you to grip down on this club a bit. And as I start to grip down on this club, now my angle of approach is coming in this way. And as it's coming in this way now, I'm going to avoid that stuff behind it and strike the ball first. Now, the divot has variations. Sometimes the divot, the ball's in the front of the divot. Sometimes the ball's in the middle of the divot. Sometimes it's towards the back. However, this technique, no matter what it is, is never going to harm you. It's always going to help you. Now, a couple other things I like to do. I like to grip this club just a little bit open. And as a result of gripping it open, I also like to aim just a little bit left. This steep angle of attack is going to flight the ball out lower. I open up the club face to get this to get up into the air a little bit more. And as I open it up and I add some loft, I'm also going to add some right bias for the right-handed player. That's why I'm going to aim a little bit more to the left. Now, finally, what's going to happen, because I'm gripping it open, the ball's not going to go quite as far. And because I've got a steeper angle of approach, the club's going to kind of run into the ground a bit more. I'm not going to be able to generate the distance that I would normally. So I'm going to grab more club. In other words, if it's normally a nine iron shot, I'm hitting eight. If it's normally six, I'm going to hit five, okay? But the principles are still the same. So club face is open. I'm gripping down on this setting that ball a little bit back of my stance. So what I like to do, and it's a very simple thing to do, I just got a couple of inches between my ball and this drying rack, I like to put my trail foot right on that. So you'll see my trail foot is right in line with this. And now that ball looks like it's back in the stance. I'm gonna now open up my stance a little bit. So I'm now over here. I'm getting closer to it. Now I'm gonna go ahead and hit this. I'm gonna show you what I want you to do when we're swinging here. And what you're going to see is, is that that golf ball is going to come out. 
It's only going to go, look at that, I hit my target, but come on up here now, and let's just look at a little bit of the things that we've got going on. First of all, I hit that 135 yards in the air. My nine iron's going way more than 135. Probably 145 is what I get. But because of all the, the accommodations that I make for the, for the divot, I all of a sudden am going to lose some distance. I open up that club face, that's going to lose some distance. Look at what happened to my launch angle, 21 degrees, that's great. But the apex comes down. Look at my apex, 76. Normally I'm playing at about 90 feet. So this is down about 14 feet, a fairly significant amount. That ball's going to be coming in a little bit lower. And as a result, when it comes in there, particularly when you start dealing with fives, fives and six irons, that ball's going to release a little bit more. So don't be... Uh, planning on hitting this ball that's going to have a tremendous amount of underspin or backspin and it's going to stop. It's not going to happen. So you need to make sure that you allow for that release, that rollout. And then finally, what you're going to see is even though I opened up that club face and I got a little steep, look at that. I still had some left spin. Don't think to yourself that this thing is going to slice off. It'll start a little bit. It'll jump a little bit to the right. And again, I aimed left. And that ball basically started on the line that I wanted. That's how I hit it into, the, into, that, uh, into that target there. So what I need you to appreciate is you make these accommodations. Now, finally, the thing I want you to think about when you're swinging the club is elevation. I want this club to elevate up into the air. And what you're going to find when we do this now is I'm going to strike that ball solidly. It might even come out a little bit lower still. And when I do that, what I want to feel is I want to feel the wrists hinge. So I want those wrists to hinge up here, and then I'm going to hang on to that. Now you can see when I do this, my club is now impacting the, the ground well forward of that golf ball. And as I start to get that, now what's going to happen is create angle, hang on to angle. The impact point, the low point is going to move forward. So... Now I'm just working on setting the angle here. So I'm just feeling like the, I'm throwing the head of the club up into the air. So I get in here, throw the head of the club up into the air. And now what I get is I get a fairly good strike on that one. This one's gonna come out a little bit farther because I created a little bit more leverage, a little bit more angle, but that ball only went 139, still not quite the distance that my nine iron goes normally. Now, I want to put all this together here for you so you understand exactly what we've got going on. Because the next time you get in that divot, what I want you to go is, hey, you know what? That breed guy gave me some good stuff and I had a chance to practice this and I've got this figured out. So run through all of it. Stand a little closer, we start with ball position. And one of the best things for you to remind yourself or remember all this stuff is always go through ground up. What am I doing that's happening down here? And then what do I do as I move forward or move up into the body? So, ball position is going to go back. I'm going to get a little bit closer. That's ball position on the ground. Then, as I do that, weight distribution goes forward. That's still a low thing, that's a foot thing. Then I start getting into well, what's the accommodations that I'm making with my hands. Well, I've gotten closer, now I gotta grip down. That's my hands, I gotta open up the club face. That's my hands. Weight distribution is sitting on that forward side as we talked about before. And as I get closer, the angle that the shaft is at is gonna stand up, so I gotta grip down on it. Those are all related. And then as you finish all the, the stuff, the last thing that's through your mind is I gotta lever this club up into the air. So. Go through it all, opening up the stance, that's also on the ground, everything else. Now we go in here, throw this club up in the air, lever the club, stay on that left side. Really good strike there, let's see if I've got this one going into my target. Perfect, got it into the target. Come on over here, let's look at this again. Some really good numbers. Greg, I don't know whether you can play that shot again. There you go, look at how straight that golf ball is. It, it, you, in fact, you can't even see the ball falling down. And the reason why is because all the things that I did, I wanted to, to achieve that steep angle of approach. Club face got opened up as I levered that up into the air. It started basically on my line, had just a little bit of movement to the right, which is excellent. Distance, 136, so that's all perfect. All of it worked out well. And my apex, by the way, Still not at 90 feet, that's at 80 feet, so really close. So 
as you start to, to understand that when you get the ball in the divot, it's not a bad thing, you just have to understand how to deal with it. And the way you're gonna deal with it is practice it. So many times you get into situations you're uncomfortable with because you've never practiced it. Get yourself one of these little things here. Go out there and hit some shots and practice. And as you start to do that, you're gonna improve your contact and you won't be afraid of that divot anymore. You won't bail out on that excuse. You know what they say, of all of man's great inventions, the excuse is the worst. That's proven it, presented by Titleist. It's time for a grip tip presented by Golf Pride. You've hit a good tee shot. You've missed your approach shot. You're about 30 yards short of this green. And now the troubles begin. Why? Well, there's a couple of reasons. The biggest reason why you're struggling with this shot, you're not getting your arms to move and they don't move in conjunction with the body. So what you do is you stand here like this, you lift the club up into the air, you stab the club down into the ground, you take this massive divot, sometimes you hit it pretty well, sometimes you top it, sometimes as you're stabbing down, you're jumping back away from it. There's no coordination to the shot. Now I wanna teach you how to teach yourself how you can improve this shot, but you have, it's gonna take a little bit of work. Here's what you do. The first thing I want you to do is I want you to understand that I've got to get my arms to get on this side of my body and on this side of the body. I'm not just moving the club head. I'm moving the whole program. So I'm moving my arms over to here and I'm moving my arms over here. And I want you to rehearse getting your arms to get into motion. So I'm going to tell you, freeze your body. Freeze your body. Move your arms over here. Move your arms over here. Freeze your body, don't move it. You've got to teach yourself how to generate speed in the arms. Here, here. And when I start to get to where I'm moving the arms properly and the overhead shot, will you'll see this very easily. If I freeze my arms, lift the club up and go like this, you won't see the glove at all. And then I stab down and now all of a sudden now I've got this huge angle that I've created in this, like this, and you don't see the club, you don't see my glove on either side of my body. Whereas, when I move my arms and my hands to the opposite side, so away on the right side and then over to the left side, now you're gonna see the glove show up over here and show up over here. You can see that there. Boom, boom. My body isn't moving. All I'm doing is taking my arms and throwing them into motion. Now, that's the first part. You've got to teach your arms to move. Then you marry it to the body. I don't want you to just feel like this is just all body like this. You feel like a penguin moving this. And I want you to feel like, well, yeah, my body's going to move, but my arms are going to move. I have to get my arms moving to the opposite side. So it becomes a marriage of arms and body. And when you start getting this to, to move through, there's a fluidity to the motion that you're going to feel. Go, this feels so easy. You, so many times you're afraid to move these arms. They've got to move. And now all of a sudden you start, you're literally dancing with this golf club. And as you dance with the club, what you find is, is that the club has a consistent low point. Once you start to get a consistent low point, now you start being able to have predictable distance, predictable carry distance, predictable spin rate, predictable, everything becomes predictable. Start lines, all of it. Don't be afraid to let your arms get into motion. When you start to do this, what you're gonna see is I've got this target out there at 30 yards. All of a sudden now I'm carrying about 23 or so yards. It travels out about 30 yards. All my numbers look pretty good, apexes, all of it is the same because what I'm doing is I'm letting my arms move and my body is moving with it. It's not one of those where this is just hands, no body, or body, no any, they have to move independent. They have to move together and they have to move independent. I know it sounds crazy, but the arms have to move and the body has to move. And the, the arms don't move because the body moved and the body doesn't move because the arms moved. They're independent. They work together, but they're independent. It's a very hard thing to understand, but when you start to feel this motion happening, now all of a sudden you're going to start to hit shots that are going to go similar distances. That one there carried about 24 yards, the other one about 23 yards. So 
What I can tell you is, let you, teach yourself to let your arms move. Keep your body still. Move your arms. Let them feel like they've got motion on either side. As that starts to happen, then you just start putting a little bit of movement with the body in there. Your short game is going to pick up. Your consistency with low point is going to increase. And the consistency with the shot, the start line, the spin rate, the apex, everything. It's all going to get better. It's all going to get more consistent because you've allowed these two independent sources to work together, but independently. And that's a grip tip presented by Golf Pride. Putting the club into motion. It's such a hard thing to do consistently. I want to help you with it. It's time for our transformational tip presented by Morgan Franklin. You get over your shot. You're standing there thinking about all these different things. What do you want to do? What you don't want to do? All that other stuff. And you feel frozen. How do I put the club into motion? What do I need to think about? Well, you know what? What you need to do is think less. And one of the easiest ways to think less is create a trigger or some sort of forward press. We saw it. I grew up, Gary, uh, I'm sorry, um, Gary Player, knee flex went like this. He, he set that knee like that. Arnold Palmer did the same thing. And this little movement going this way, Ben Hogan, throw it like that. Now we see modern players. Rory McIlroy does a little bit of, of movement with the club head before he goes. Henrik Stenson shifts into it. Alex Noren, he does two things. He actually takes his hands, pushes his hands forward as this trail knee is sinking down. So there's this winding up by unwinding first, then winding, then unwinding. It's a very interesting thing that allows this club to get into motion and it creates some freedom. Now, there's no ideal, there's just ideal for you. I want to share with you a couple little different things that will help you do this. My favorite, what I use in my golf swing, is just my hands going forward. So what I like to do is I go through my pre-shot routine, and then right before I go, I'm going to put my hands, just bump them forward, and it throws the club into a backward motion. And the reason why I like to use that is because I do it with putting as well. Those hands just have a little bit of bump forward. One of the other things I told you about that Nicholas and Palmer and Hogan, if it's good enough for those guys, it's probably good enough for you. There's a little bit of a movement coming from the head or coming from the leg. So Nicholas like this, uh, Dustin Johnson like this, Palmer like this, Player like this, Hogan like this, right? There's something going on. I don't know that the head thing is my favorite thing to do, but if you're gonna do that, what I would suggest is just give yourself a slight turn like this. That's gonna open up the, the, the image of the club in a direction. That's not my favorite. My favorite, as I told you, was the hands going forward. The other thing that you can do is put this knee, this trail knee into movement this way. So this is the one that Palmer, Player, all those guys, did you get in here like this? Make that move that way. Now, there's also the bump on the ground. This was something that we saw. The late Payne Stewart did this. Rory McIlroy. This club does some bumping around over here. So when you get in here like this, you're going like that. This club bumps. And just that little movement, that little motion, helps to throw the club into the air. And finally, the thing that I see a lot of players do is just a little bit of a shift back this way. So it's just a little bit of a push, and the push comes out of the, the lead foot. You're taking that lead foot and you're pushing back this way. So get up into here like this. Henrik Stenson will do this. Rory even has a little bit of this. It's just a... Now, I love that for throwing the club into motion. One of the problems with that one for me is I tend to shift and not rotate. So the reason why I like the knee is because when you go like this, when the knee goes in, these hips tend to rotate open. And when they rotate open, now they'll rotate close. So you're almost going, and Matthew Wolf is another guy that does this little move, not to quite get his stuff into motion, but kind of remind him of where he's trying to go with the golf swing. What does that all mean? It doesn't matter what you do. You gotta find something. So, as you start to get into this, movement is great. Forward presses, triggers are fabulous for you. And what I would suggest is find something. And what I would say is, 
I like those hands going forward. Let's see if I can put that into motion and find my target. Just a little bump on that one. I was actually thinking about, I gotta hit that again. I was actually thinking about what I was doing in my forward press instead of just hitting my target. You gotta practice this stuff. I'm telling you, you gotta practice it. And as you practice it, you'll get better at it here. Let me try that one more time. That was a little bit of a, wait, what? All right, here we go. A Little bit of a forward press. Ah, there we go. That's a solid one. Come on, carry, carry. Oh, just right on the target. All right, so what I want you to do, find yourself that forward press. Find yourself something that's gonna put this club into motion. And when you start to do that, you won't feel like you're stuck over the ball. You won't feel like, I can't get this club into motion. You won't feel like you're a statue. You'll feel like there's some fluidity. You'll start seeing targets and you'll start reacting to targets. That's a transformational tip presented by Morgan Frankel.